Hi guys, this is another process video. This one is from my stash. And so it's part of my Think Outside the Kit series, which is where I uh, put aside my kit and do a layout just using supplies from my stash. Uh, this particular month, the stash that I'm dipping into is actually uh, some of the papers that are included in this month's Darlene kit from Scraptastic. But um, I also, separate from the Darlene kit, I bought the entire I Am collection or every single piece that I could get my hands on anyways. So I'm just going through the paper pad there. And I, um, I'm i going to be scrapbooking that picture that you see on the top there. It's a photo from last summer of my daughters uh, and they're getting ready for 80s day at their theater camp. And this is a piece of paper from my stash that I just went and grabbed from my paper storage. And it is a collaborative paper between Studio Calico and Sassafras. And it's called the Abroad Collection. And I have the whole collection. I've used a couple of pieces of it for a New York City uh, series of layouts that I did a, a long time ago now. Um, but I still have lots of the paper and I just wanted something neutral. I want this entire layout to be mostly neutral um, and because the the photo has such beautiful bright colors and then it's also it has an Instagram filter on it that also really emphasizes how brightly colored their clothes were and it's such a big part of what the 80s were all about those bright neon colors and that sort of thing um, that I really wanted to emphasize that the color in the photo and so my way of doing that is to use neutral papers and neutral embellishments as well. And uh, I'm just going to tear a piece of this tissue paper from a bowl that I bought. And I really like how the tear turned out. So I'm just going to straighten it up a little bit because it's, it's a little bit too distracting when there's so many jaggedy edges. So I just use my ruler to tear it a little bit straighter. And I really like how that looks. Now I'm going to grab another piece of pattern paper, but again, a neutral one. So that brick paper is from the I Am Collection. And now I'm also going to take this text paper and uh, tear a piece of that as well. And it's going to be more of a, of a, of a vertical sized rectangle or vertical shaped rectangle. So I've got a horizontal rectangle and a vertical rectangle. And then I have that tissue paper, which has a bit of a purpley bluish tone to it. Just had to crinkle it up a little bit to emphasize the texture that it adds and then i thought i had this uh, gold paper on my desk which was from the but it's so pretty uh blog hop or youtube hop challenge that craft and kate is doing and uh if you didn't see my video for that it should be the one right before this one and um, it's where you challenge yourself to use a, a paper that's too pretty to use and my friend stephanie had been hoarding this piece and so she she gave it to me to use for this for that challenge along with I already had I had a couple of things from my own stash that I used as well for that so check that out if you haven't seen it but I'm just kind of cutting it into a horizontal shape here that's going to run behind my tissue paper and that's also fairly neutral so you'll see that you know besides that I mean that tissue paper really takes on quite a lot of color when it's put amongst all of these other more neutral papers and uh, that's not going to be the case I had forgotten my coffee on the coffee warmer um, so sorry about that um, yeah, so it, it really stands out as blue, but once I add my title and journaling and whatnot, it's not going to stand out quite so much. So I'm just grabbing the embellishments from the I Am collection, including these frames, which I kind of thought about framing out the photo and having some of the photos showing underneath, but I decided against that. And now see that black frame up there? I'm going to put my journaling up there, but that black frame is too heavy. And then again, I'm trying to only have, have the only really bright colors be in the photo and also in the title and in the sprinkles that I'm going to add at the very very end. So I went with this more neutral frame. I wanted a tiny bit of color up there but not too too much and not too bright. So the, those two frames are neutral enough relative to the colors in the photo anyways. And I'm going to stack them like that and do some journaling on them. But first, I'm probably chatting with my friend Tanya who was with me today when I was scrapbooking. So, and I pulled out these uh, little clips. They're, they're sort of like paper clips, but they are, um, you've seen them made out of metal before in plastic. These are sort of like a, a laminated cardstock. They're not quite plastic and they're not paper either. So they're, they're sturdier than a paper. They're, they're um, 
and they've got like a shiny surface on them. They're really interesting. They're unlike anything else I've ever seen. They do have a plastic kind of look to them, but I do think that they are cardstock with just a plastic coating on them. Or I could be wrong. I don't really know. That would be my guess of what they are. So I'm, uh, I have the, the I Am Collection chipboard beside me, and uh, I'm probably chatting right now. We were watching music videos, and um, we get a little bit distracted. So if this gets too boring, I'll stop and take out the chunks with nothing in it. But for now, I'll just leave it. So my, my kind of my idea here with this design is that I'm going to have the title be the most uh, kind of like the biggest element on this. It's not a particularly long title, but I did use a really large font. And as I'm putting together these elements and layering the papers together, uh, I'm sort of thinking and playing around with the idea of different uh, titles that I might be able to use. And I'm thinking I'd like to use maybe an 80s phrase. My first thought was was to just say 80s girls or 80s day at camp or something like that but it's a little bit not playful enough so I'm going to think about that. I'll think about that while I uh, play around with some embellishments that I want, might want to use on this layout and again I'm trying to pick some of the more neutral embellishments although I don't want them to be completely lost in uh, the sprinkles that I'm going to add at the very end. So um, I thought about using that little banner up there, which would be cute and different for me, um, but it's not going to stay there. That banner, if you follow my channel, you have seen me try to use that several times. I have two of them because those chipboard pieces also came in the, um, in the Darlene kit. So eventually I'm gonna get that banner on a layout. I promise you, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Um, so I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm sorry, you guys. It's I'm always distracted when I have somebody in my room with me, but I did want to share this process with you guys because I was hoping that it would end up being a pretty fun layout, and I think it was. So I'm having a look at these stickers, which give, and I'm actually thinking about using the letter stickers for the titles. I'm just having a look at some of the phrases, and I'm going to decorate up this little plain beige heart by adding a sticker that says enjoying life and it's multicolored font that's really cute from the collection and I really love layering stickers and chipboard elements together because it just adds so much more detail and interest to your layout so I'm getting ready to glue everything down now that I have a pretty good idea of the general arrangement of this one and Again, here I am <laughs> eventually gonna do it so first I'm gonna take a picture just in case I forget how I have things set up which is especially good if you tend to be interrupted in your scrapbooking I'm not but um, in this in this case at this point um, but it is it is a good idea to take a picture if you're not sure if you're gonna remember exactly what you planned to do so I'm just using my ATG to adhere all of these pieces down and I'm going to also um, grab some pop dots and put those in between my layers. And I'm using a combination here of Stampin' Up! pop dots, they call them dimensional adhesive, and uh, some, some other brand of um, pop dots that I can't quite remember the name of. <laughs> And they're slightly taller than, like they're thicker than the Stampin' Up! ones, so they give a little bit more lift. And I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, take some of those off before my layout is complete. But at this point, I'm thinking I want to lift all these corners. Um, I'm later going to decide against that. But that's the good thing about not adhering the backs of them, is it does make it easier to change your mind. You only have to remove one surface instead of two. So there's that gold piece of paper and again I'm putting some pop dots under it to lift up the ends of it. And I'm just going to lay this blue piece of tissue paper down right on top. And I guess first I'm going to adhere my, my um, photo. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here. Oh, I think I'm pop dotting it. What am I doing? Oh yes, first I am stapling that little paper clip in place. I guess I did that off camera, sorry about that. So I just used my tiny attacher to put that butterfly clip in place. That's again from the I Am collection, I think I already talked about it. And 
I ran out of the big pop dots, so I had to use these tiny little ones, which is not the most efficient way to use pop dots, but it'll work in a pinch. So I'm just putting that like that. And I did turn that tissue paper so that the kind of jagged edge is along the top and the right hand side, or the top and the left hand side, sorry about that. And I just like how that fits with where I'm going to want the title to be, which is going to be to the left somewhere. And I wasn't entirely sure what my title would be or how long it would be, but I knew I wanted to use bright colors for my title and probably a large font. I was imagining it being a big long title, like a multi-word title. It's not all that long, but I used big, big letter stickers for it. So I'm just adhering these. These chipboards have just a little backing on them and they're self-adhesive, so I'm just putting them all in place and using my tiny attacher, more for design there than to actually attach it, but it looks cute. Those little staples are really cute. And now I think I'm gonna make those frames now because I'm planning to put some journaling on them. And one of my favorite things to do with frames is to back them with vellum and then use them for journaling pieces. So I just have some scraps here of vellum and I'm sorry that so much of this happened outside of the camera, um, but I was just kind of trimming off a piece, a little square piece, and I used the frame as a kind of like a template and there. I just, um, you know, I used my ATG to adhere the adhesive onto the frame. And what I'm doing there is um, I had a lot of uh, extra adhesive just kind of pulling off along with the uh, chipboard. So I was just kind of using my fingers to roll it all back in place. And then I just used my scissors to trim it around so that there was no vellum sticking out and it looked nice and neat and tidy. And now I'm going to kind of lay, layer those like that with the feather kind of down in the corner like that. So now that I have that ready for journaling, I'm going to... Um, get my thickers and try to figure out what kind of title I might want to use for this because my journaling will depend upon my title at least some because I don't want to repeat the same thing in my journaling that I would have already said in my in, in my title so I, I'm kind of feeling like this needs something else so I went to my embellishments and I grabbed a set of those flowers from uh, I think uh, Bella Ru the Bella Rouge collection, and I think it's Pink Paisley that makes that. And um, it just it wasn't going to work. It was going to throw off the layout quite a lot, r regardless of where I put it. So I didn't go with those. So now I'm just looking through my big giant basket of thickers, and I'm picking out anything that is bright and cheerful and very sparkly and big and bright. <laughs> Looking for bright and colorful thickers here. And so um, I do have quite a large collection of thickers that I've collected over the years, um, through both through kit clubs and also just kind of picking up a set here and there. I've never been a huge shopper of thickers, so I'm not someone who, who, you know, sets out to buy a whole lot of them, but somehow I ended up with a whole lot of them anyways. So um, I have these set out and it's really just these three, like the pink and the orange and the yellow that I'm thinking about using, but I do have two backup sets just in case I decide to change it up a little bit. And here, I know I'm gonna use the word 80s in my title, but I, I'm not entirely sure of what my title will will exactly be so I just put out 80s because I liked the large numbers that came with that particular font and um, I, I like the S I like that it's a cursive S and so um, I'm just kind of thinking about what might be an 80s phrase that I might want to use and I was drawing a bit of a blank Tanya and I were kind of laughing and and kind of throwing out a couple of phrases and so I just googled 80s phrases and um, this particular website had a lot of things that were from TV shows and stuff that I didn't I didn't really want something specific I wanted something really like a generic 80s phrase so I went with like totally which was sort of just for lack of something more interesting I was gonna do um, gnarly 
And I can't remember the other one. Tanya and I were just kind of bouncing around some ideas, but I ended up going with like totally. Which is funny because I still say totally quite a lot. I use it sort of, you know, not in my regular speech, but when I'm just kind of joking around, I will say totally. I hope I don't say it in my regular speech. I might though. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is fun. I love these letters, the stickers, these, it's called Broadway, the orange and the yellow. And uh, they're from maybe a year or two ago. And they're just so awesome. They're just such bright color colors and uh, they have glitter on them as well and then the name of the pink uh, letter sticker is it's called rain boots rain boots so and they're both thickers or I guess all three of them are thickers and so I'm just playing around a little bit with the placement here and I thought the 80s just fit so perfectly on that gold piece of uh, paper that I had to put it there which brings my whole title down a little bit from from where it was going to be but that's okay. I like it like that. There we go. And so I'm just starting with the S so that I'm sure that it's going to, you know, land in the right place. And now again, I wanted the Y on totally to just cover the white strip of the border of that of that photo. So I'm kind of working my way backwards from there. And then I place this T so that it's just on the edge of to, of that uh, brick paper. Because I didn't want the line of the edge of the brick paper to compete with the line of the T. So I just made it so that the T overlapped with that line. And now as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, I know just the mists I want to use. So I pulled out Taxi and that tumble die. That tumble die, uh, incidentally, is something that Craft and Kate sent me a very, very long time ago. Probably four years ago. Um, so thank you, Kate. I'm finally, I've, I've used it several times, but I'm, it's going to be really the, uh, the center of this layout. I, I think that the, uh, neon sprinkles that I put on at the very, very end become the main kind of embellishment on this layout because everything else kind of fades away once I add those. It's really, it's actually pretty cool to see it happen. So you'll get to see that at the very, very end. So here's where I'm deciding to take out those pop dots because it's just distracting like the shadows that the paper is casting are the shadows that the papers are casting is just too it's competing too much with my title. So um, I'm gluing down that gold piece. It keeps popping up, but once it goes in, in my album, it won't pop up anymore. Now I'm going to do my journaling and you'll see that I'm just uh, using the grid mat as my lines so I've kind of I'm holding it on my mat in such a way that the lines are um, you know horizontal and even <laughs> so that I can spell out my words properly and the journaling says uh, so much fun to dress up for theater camp and then on the back one it says unicorn theater 2014 I'm just overlapping this one a little bit so that it hangs off the page. And now I'm going to use some pop dots because I'm layering two chipboard elements. And so that means that one of them would be hanging up in the air if I didn't use pop dots. So just use those to even that out. And now I'm just going to attach that little feather right there. And it fills some of the negative space there in the that's left over at the end of my journaling. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. And here comes the mist. And this really is the most fun part of this layout. I absolutely love how the mist kind of adds to this one. So right now it's pretty boring, right? Like really the, the photo and the title are the only splashes of color and everything else is really just kind of fading away. But what happens is those um, bland elements that I've added so far, like the little chipboard pieces and the feather and the, and the frames and stuff, they just become kind of like background interest and the colors really start to pop once I add the sprinkles. This is so, I mean, I was hoping that it would turn out nice, but I didn't really, I didn't really know how it would turn out. So I'm, I'm really pleased with, with the results. Any minute now, I'm going to come back and mist. 
Okay, so I cut some of it out because I don't know how long I ended up talking, but here I am <laughs> with that tumble dye. And this is made for dyeing clothes, I think, or fabric. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think it was a scrapbook uh, item. It's by SEI. And uh, yeah, I really love how it looks. And it wasn't making big enough splatters, so I just took a broad uh, paintbrush and dribbled some more larger drips with that. And this stuff is quite uh, liquidy and it, it actually dries more neon than it is when it's wet. So right now I'm kind of thinking, oh, that's not, I mean, you know, it's bright, but it doesn't look, it wasn't what I imagined it being because I have used these, uh, that mist before for other things and I remembered it being brighter. So I was kind of thinking, oh, but as, as I dried it, it got brighter and brighter. So I was pleased, more and more pleased the more I dried it. So I'm just using my heat gun here to speed it up because I do want to sprinkle some yellow mist as well. And I do not want the two of them to mix. I want the pink to be pink and the yellow to be yellow. And when the yellow overlaps with the pink, I want it to look, you know, to have a definite overlapping, like two drops look. And if you missed it, when the first mist is wet, then the mists will just kind of commingle and uh, become yellow instead of staying staying true to color. So this taxi is the brightest yellow that I have, and it was really not um, it was not all that bright once it landed on the paper and soaked into the paper a little bit. And so I grabbed some of this Heidi Swap Citron which is, oh my goodness, it's like the best color ever. It's this beautiful bright green. And oh, I was so happy with how this looked. I love that it's sort of really overboard and there's a whole lot of mist on this layout and it just totally makes it to me. And so I wanted to just bring a couple of little drips of mist up onto the actual parts of the layout so it didn't look so contrived like I didn't I wanted it to look like it was misted afterwards and not ahead of time so I wanted some to land on the upper layers as well as on the bottom layers so that's what I did there and yeah I think the mist just really adds to it it looks great so I'm just tidying up a little bit so that's Taxi Mr. Huey's and Citron Heidi Swap Color Shine, and then uh, the Neon Pink Tumble Dye is the, the mists that I used. And now I just have my little collection of enamel dots. Most of these are leftovers from other projects. I don't think I've ever bought a set of enamel dots outside of what's come in kits. And you see, I have a lot there. I might've bought like maybe two or three sets of enamel dots, but not much. So I'm just, uh, I'm putting an enamel dot on each of the uh, little hearts at the bottom. And then I'm also putting, I wanted to put one up here just to kind of balance it off and bring a little bit more interest up there. And now I'm feeling like I'd like to have something else here. And I'm looking at those stickers from the I Am collection. And I grabbed a little tiny star and it doesn't make a huge impact there, but it's just, again, it's, I, I'm not trying to make impact. My impact was the mist and the, and the title and the colors in the photo. So anything else that I add, I want it to be pretty subtle. And I'm going to add more stars. I don't want to have just one of them on there. And uh, so here's another one. And they're all just from the same sticker sheet. And then I'm going to put another one over here. So they, the stars make a visual triangle, but they're not like, they're not something that you're really going to pick up because it's such a tiny little thing. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to spread them around the layout. And then I took one more of those multicolored uh, stickers and added, it says, I am me. And I put it on the feather there just for a little bit more interest up there in the corner. Look at those splatters. They're so cool. <laughs> this was a really fun layout. It was fun to do. I wasn't entirely sure how it would work out because I had this idea of a bunch of neutrals and then just putting pops of really bright color 
Um, so I really wasn't, I didn't have a good sense of how I would pull that off. I just knew I wanted to do that. So it was really fun to kind of see it come together at the very end with the sprinkles, because before I added the sprinkles, it was really kind of a bland layout, but, uh, yeah, those, that mist really, it looks awesome. Those colors are just beautiful. So here are the photos. Uh, thanks so much for having a look at my layout today. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.